So today we kick off my summer 2014 anime first impressions review roster with an anime which is trying to glamorise the world of trains and the Japanese railway network, had it been maintained as a fully nationalised entity. Chronicling the exploits of a young man yearning to be an engineer, Rail Wars is a blatant attempt to make the world of locomotive transportation seem appealing to those who might not have thought it so prior to watching. Does it succeed in doing this? Not really, but it tries. I'm not gonna lie, the first thing I thought of when I saw our main lead Naoto Takayama was this popular meme. To me, he seems like a walking placard for the train industry, as does this story of him graduating from the JNRC, Japan's National Railway Central Academy, and finding his feet whilst traipsing the halls of Tokyo Station. In this world, the rail network is run by the government, and the threat of privatisation is hanging around in the air like a bad smell, or diesel train. Y y you see what I did there? I I'm trying to be like Naoto. I like trains. Once he graduates, he's carted off to the 4th Guard Squad, which is otherwise translated into the Misfits Division. Along the way, he meets Aoi, the gun nut gal, Haruka, the busty brain box, and Sho, the Joey Wheeler of the group, who all miraculously graduate and end up in the Guard Squad, initially run by Nana, a somewhat homely and misplaced leader who treats the squad like it's an after-school club. The team spends their days wandering around their home station acting as station security, which is mostly pointing people where to go and whatnot. Exciting stuff. However, there are moments when things do pick up, such as a bomb scare or a theft of a woman's purse, which act as a perfect chance to show off the team's skills, or a chance to get some hot angles of Aoi being cool, or Haruka bumbling around with her bosom somehow, and Naoto being, well, liking trains. I appreciate that Takumi Toyoda, the writer of the light novel which this anime is based on, wants to follow a different path, or line, and tell a story revolving around an often overlooked mode of transportation, and yet it's essential for modern travel, especially in Japan. To use the railway as a backdrop for a story is a novel idea these days, and that I respect, but there's a reason why it's not been done before, or at least not as often. It ain't half dull sometimes. I don't find it boring, but I can imagine most people would get tired of the characters spouting different line numbers, train sounds, or the ungodly amount of information that Naoto and his childhood friend Mari, who turns up in episode 3, spew forth. It feels like that the story is trying too hard to convey the train aspect of the narrative to the audience, where actually you don't need much. You're in a station and trains naturally appear there! That's all you need. So how does Toyota and Yoshifumi Matsuda, the anime's director, combat this potential turnoff? Well, I think it's kind of obvious, isn't it? Cute girls and awkward fan service intertwined with the train porn. That should be enough to toot one's horn. That's when we get to the show's biggest flaw. It's sheer and unashamed use of fan service to keep the audience watching. One moment in particular is when Naoto first meets Aoi and Haruka. Naoto is helping a kid retrieve a balloon which got stuck in a tree. He is struggling, but from nowhere comes Aoi, who does backflips and unnecessarily acrobatic moves to denote that she's the tough, spunky one, who don't take no crap from nobody. Immediately behind her is Haruka, whose contribution is to have her skirt fly up, Marilyn Monroe style, to act as a signifier of what her role in the story will be. The pin-up. Granted Haruka is supremely intelligent and often outthinks the rest of her team, but her busty figure and tendency to lean over a lot suggestively negates her intellect at the end of the day. This scene is only 90 seconds into episode 1 by the way. Wow. This show doesn't like to beat about the push. As for Nana, the squad leader, she's also pretty busty and has a childlike serenity to something which should be taken seriously. The whole notion that the squad meet in a small storage room and treat proceedings like a school club, it even looks like one, is such a glaring allusion to the show's ultimate composition. It's a high school show and these guys are the hall monitors. Simple as that. However, I will give the show credit for something in particular. I don't hate the characters themselves. True, their makeups are completely stock, but the personalities are likeable. Sho, the other male character, is pretty funny sometimes, and to see him run around after the others is pretty amusing. Haruka may be fan service orientated, but she's a really nice person who is really clever. If she wasn't so well endowed and prone to clumsy antics which contradict her bright brain, she'd be a great love interest for Naoto. Aoi may be a hothead, but she's a good egg ultimately. Her love for guns and using her fists to settle arguments overshadow her genuine desire to do a good job and protect the station from thugs. That's pretty noble. She's insecure, and believes that being brash and partial to violence will mask that insecurity. I just wish that this show wouldn't rely on tropes to keep people watching, or overload the view of the facts about trains that most people will forget in five minutes, because they don't care. Perhaps try and find a happy medium. Sadly, that doesn't happen here. 
So should you skip Rail Wars? Yes and no. If you're looking for something which is quite clever, sophisticated and refined, then you won't find it here. It's a very conflicted tale trying to be a weekly 20 minute commercial for trains and the world around them. Yet it also tries to appeal to Moe fans and those looking for some all too familiar fan service who might have to put up with some stuff about trains. Naoto is fairly forgettable as a main lead. He's not a weakling or a jerk, just plain vanilla, except for the fact he likes trains. Have I mentioned that before? Despite all the negative remarks I've made, I still think this anime is not that bad. Sure, it's a mess, but it's a charming mess. Sort of like Kempfer in a way. For that, I will spare a bad review, but neither would I recommend it. It's okay. Probably a show for when you have nothing else to watch. Rail Wars is available to stream on Crunchyroll. My rating? Caution. A bit of a narrative mess, but the characters have potential in the long run. If you like what you heard, please visit my Patreon campaign to help grow Anaphile at patreon.com forward slash or follow me on Twitter at Marsico X.